Whoa, it's Woolsey. I'm on my old account, Dan's Woman, again. Welcome back to the co-op building series level swap. Today I've got Juniper with me. Say hi, Juni. Hi, Juni. Oh, Lake did the same thing? Mm -hmm. Let's go. Mm -hmm. This isn't gonna go well. This is level swap. Juni and I are both gonna start brand new levels, but every 20 minutes we must pass our levels over to each other until we've had three turns building on each level, which is six total time slots. The end goal is to make a functional part of a level. In our building time, we're both going to split up and record individually, so make sure that you watch the other side if you want to see their perspective as well. And, uh, yeah, is there anything you have to say before we start, Juni? The last time I used the editor was in one of Viprin's, like, creator battle things. I think it was against EBW. It didn't end well, but I'm a little bit hopeful that Woolsey will be able to fix whatever I break. With us, it's going to be a little bit more defensive. I'm probably going to break things in the process, and you're going to have to fix them back I together. I will break your face. Are you kidding me? Oh, I'm so stupid. I downloaded the song and then didn't actually select it to use. This is not going to go well. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. I'm going to be nice this episode. I'm not going to push the boundaries with someone that barely even knows how to start, if you know what I mean. So in the beginning, we've got some blue pad gimmicks where you have to press the orb immediately after, but then there's a fake. We're going to hit this yellow orb instead of waiting for that blue down there. For this level swap, I'm going to be using Eurolight by 12th Chromatic. You'll probably recognize it from Star Party by Dominus, just on a one second start off set. It's super catchy, it's gonna be really easy to make some nice simple gameplay for. I'm messing with momentum right here, you've gotta hit this green orb to give you the downwards momentum from the blue pad chucking you down. So if you hit the yellow jump pad, you hit this spike, if you hit the blue orb, you should escape outwards like that. Very cool. So there's slabs on the sides to make the blocks look cooler towards the end. I'm not gonna do that all the way through, I wanna add some bigger structures that are gonna be easy to design. Let's do the visibility test is all of the gameplay visible on screen it seems to be so far remember the fake and then the green orb here nice okay that platform at the bottom is just not visible at all but you get the idea of where to go my game crashed i don't want to go too crazy with this but i do have some time left i'm probably just gonna put some pillars in right here and add a block transition on the left should be fine just adding little pillars here and there as long as they're not mistaken for structures it'll be fine you saw that i kept on jumping when i pressed that orb that probably shouldn't happen there it seems a little bit unfair i'm just gonna scale up a j block in that region the orb input can't be continued with a jump if you're holding and that's 20 minutes how do you feel? There's no way it's been 20 minutes. <laughs> I made six seconds of gameplay. That's <laughs> fine. Honestly, the shorter levels turn out better. Hold on, I found a thing. <laughs> you found a bug at a six second level. Uh, I try not to put too much stuff off grid. Wait, did you also go off oh. grid? Oh, you did. Yeah, I just used shift and then Oh, there. that's pain. Okay, it'll be fine. It's safe. <laughs> that's the goal. Okay, well, here comes the decoration. <laughs> it's fine. Three, two, one. Good luck. Give me a background color. That looks fine to me. Plain background, and then everything else goes to black. Okay, well, except maybe the object. There we go, I can see. Step one is gonna be to make a black base with some regular objects. That's just gonna go on color one. I feel like that's self-explanatory for Juni to understand very easily. Don't fade, don't enter. Why would you go that off grid? <laughs> I feel bad because Juni's like structured these objects properly with corner pieces and everything, and I'm just about to delete these objects in a second. That's layer one. Then there's gonna be a low opacity layer that's gonna have some like substructures. So probably down the bottom here, here a little bit. I'm gonna say a box here and then around and down. I'm gonna select all of these objects and put them on group two, not group one. Make sure they're on don't fade, don't enter. They're going to be four just like the other ones. Group one is gonna be used for our zero opacity group. There we go, nice and memorable. Group two will be half opacity. As well as this, I'm gonna add a couple of spikes here and there. They're on black anyway. These are going to be half opacity as well, just to give these a bit more clarity. The idea with this is that I'm not going too crazy with it. I'm doing something that's going to be very easy to work on top of, so Juni has like a proper chance. I've set up a color channel that copies the background color. You can see with these gradient objects. These are B3, don't fade, don't enter. They're going to have a new moving group added to them. We'll copy paste this, flip it, and then add a little gap in the middle. You can see it's too wide. I'm going to scale up another object to go inside there. Copying the the values of the other objects just so we have a nice little glow pillar that's going to cover up the low opacity objects now i'm going to differentiate these this is going to be on b3 i'm going to bring the solid opacity objects up to b2 
so that they sit above this glow. So to give you an example, if I put one right here, it will cover up the low opacity, but not the full opacity, as you can see. So I'm spacing these out a little bit, leaving a gap between, so when they brush over the level with a move trigger, it's going to kind of take away these low opacity objects and reveal them again in a nice orderly fashion. So at the very beginning of the level, 3 is going to have a massive sweeping movement back 12 blocks. Then it's going to lock to the x-axis at this point, or maybe this should be later to give them a chance to move onto the screen. Let me just tweak the numbers a little bit. There we go. You can see it happening already. It's kind of creating that sweeping effect over the low opacity detail. I'll probably take advantage of that with some other details here and there. Pretty focused on the orbs or maybe the saws. Hmm. Let me put some black glow around the orbs. We'll see if it needs low opacity in a second. Okay, it definitely does. Group two is coming back. My game also just crashed. <laughs> We're copying the values of the low opacity blocks. Hey, that looks kind of cool, I think. We need to get rid of this ugly stack design though, and that's going to be fixed by selecting all of the regular blocks and setting them to zero opacity. We've got to remember that the spikes are not included in the base, so these shouldn't be taken away. Three pulse triggers right here, all in the same settings and fade times. It looks like it's not because of the way that the pulse triggers work. They're kind of stupid sometimes. They're all on a plus 0 0.08, very short fade in and fade out time. Just go into the b b b in the song. For the other beats, I'm going to change the fade times and maybe even the brightness very slightly. So I'm probably not going to touch the design or the spikes because I feel like that's going to be something that Junie's comfortable doing. What I am going to do is make the ground look a bit more pleasant because you can see the ground right there is just solid black. I don't know. It just looks kind of boring. That seems okay. Maybe I do want to decrease the saturation though. Okay, that's perfect to me. And I think I'm going to select a couple of random pulse triggers and just change the hue very slightly. I don't know. This is a weird way to change the colors up, but let's test out minus 50. If not, we'll test plus 50. That's cool. So we haven't done too much, but I think it's going to be a decent start for Juni to get going with some extra design. I'm really looking forward to see what I get and seeing what this level becomes, because this could be a nightmare. It could be good. <gasps> the glow doesn't change with the hue change. Oh no. That's 20 minutes. Um, no. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I might be cheating a little bit, but it's worth it. What do you mean you're cheating? What do you do? I just needed to change something so it looked better. I discovered how pulse trigger works. <laughs> Yay! How long did it take you? Multiple minutes. Hey, this isn't that bad. It really is! It's you really did something not. cool with it, though. That's cool. Okay, I can work with that. What do I do with this? <laughs> how it's do fine. I improve on this? It's content oh. at the end of the day. Uh, I'm ready to start again, if you are. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. We have object lines that use the object color and we have some base blocks that use color channel one on copy color background okay we are going to add some pulse triggers for the object line which are going to pulse them to white and we're going to have a pulse trigger for color channel one which copies the color of the background with a little bit more brightness i don't know how much is possible with that absurdly bright background that juni's chosen with this trigger right here it's going to make for something interesting for sure we're going to change the hue until it looks right we managed to change it to juni's green just by complete chance, by going minus 90. So we're going to keep that. The song has two distinct beats, and these pulses are going to alternate on each one. There's a slight change in the song, which I'm making some adjustments to the pulses for. So as you can see, the objects go black for a second, and the outlines come up. You can hear the difference in the song right here. Then I'm adding thicker outlines to each edge, as you can see on Editor Layer 2 here. There's just one singular thick line that's on T1 above that base block. I'm probably going to use some more default blocks to give this a common theme. Uh, we're going to color these though. We're not just going to use the default ones. We're going to use the colored default ones. We need black. Does that exist? Okay, there's only one color channel. That's fine. Set that to half opacity. Uh, and then we'll probably overlay a slab on top. We're going to use the mini block to align this in the middle. As you can see, if I turn off preview mode, that's in the middle of the block now. Because if you select this object, you get a tiny grid. You can use the keyboard for that. Object and one, probably with a hue change. I'm going to say minus 90. So when it pulses to minus 90, is that going to change? Let me test. It is. Okay, that gives it a really weird tint, but that's cool. It's in a strip like that that I'm going to put on the edges of all the blocks. But before I do that, I'm going to go row by row and give them unique groups. So this one's going to have three. The next one down will have four. So for the da -da, da -da, da -da, there's going to be three sets of pulses for these strips, flipping them upside down for the top sets. Then I'm going to make a pulse trigger staircase starting on group three. 
and it's going to have 0 0.05 fade in, one second fade out, copying the colour of the background with a little bit of brightness. So it should kind of fade away into the background there. You can see it over here. This is one set right here. Then a couple of blocks later, after this strip has happened, you can see it. There's going to be another set right after it that's just going to go to white. And then the final one goes dun dun. So we need to space out these staircases a little bit more. So I'm going to select the right one, space them out, and then increase the fade time by one. Oh, I should have linked these together from the get-go because I don't want white anymore. I want a completely different hue. Ah, oh, that's annoying. Okay, copy color background and I want negative hue. I'm going to make a tiny gameplay change that Juni's not going to notice. I'm just going to shift that structure half a block to the left because I was jumping before you bumped down and that didn't feel right. Let me just play test that in normal before I stick with it. Cool. So I noticed that some of these don't go all the way down to the bottom and that's fine. I can just select the bottom set of these and copy paste them down. To spice this up a bit, I'm going to add another alpha trigger for group 2, which is the half opacity group. Change the fade time to 10, change the opacity to 1. So as the level goes on, this effect will become more and more visible and crazy towards the end, as you can see. I kind of went wild with the colors, just put random hues and hope they worked, but it seems to be fine. I like the direction this is taking anyway. I'm gonna use blending on black to make an invisible color channel, but when it has a group, it will pulse to a different color and become visible again. You can see that square is visible now. So I'm gonna make a massive square that shares the same groups as this pulsing effect. So it's gonna gradually scale outwards. I've done this a billion times in these swaps, but it should fill the space, it should be fine. The grid has been the most challenging part of this video so far for me. I'm trying to figure out how to space objects appropriately. That's a nice snug little one in there. That is 20 minutes. Oh, no! No, oh man. No! I was hoping you'd come out going, yeah, I've done something good, no. Oh boy, it works, but not in the way that I intended it to. Um, so here's the thing. You gave me something that's phenomenal, and <laughs> therefore I don't know what to do with it. My dogs, shut up. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> Is that your excuse? <laughs> You're afraid? Yeah, I'm terrified. <laughs> You're gonna look at it and be like, you suck. Whoa, how'd you do this? Wait. This is literally fine. What are you talking about? So I was trying to make it like a like a lighter background color and then I discovered like 10 minutes in, 15, 10 minutes in, that there was a light background color option. So you see what I was so trying to do, right? why did you put an object trigger at the beginning of the level when you can just- Oh! <laughs> Wait, how did you- The spike, over them? when it goes over them, it- Yeah! Yeah, that's that nuts! That was completely that's unintentional! That's insane! Absolutely unintentional! How? I was just like- Oh, this looks- I don't how know how do I did that? it! That's the thing, oh, I have no okay. idea! I have no idea! No, I see, I see. So you've got a light background spike above the spike that's on the bottom. Three, two, one. Good luck. Good luck. Luck. Luck! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what I dislike is having blending on saws because you can see the seams in them. You see those little white lines. So I've moved them away from blending. You see they've got the background kind of tint to it. That's because the detail copies the color of the background with color channel 2 that we did earlier. And we've put the base on the object line. Now you'll notice that these have group 6. My plan is to copy the odd little pulses that we added earlier. Make them detail only. So if I put group 6, these boxes at the top come up. Detail only. So this isn't going to change the outline. We're going to increase the brightness by quite a lot and keep the hue change so that flashes the inside of the saw a little bit and then on the other pulses that aren't included in this row main on these objects is just going to go to black so they kind of invert on themselves they kind of dance i like that i can probably apply that same pulsing technique to a couple of objects that can slink in the background yeah so they kind of flash yeah that's cool I like that. We can probably connect these objects to the ground using these. So say if we use T1, remove that low opacity. This is definitely possible as a block, as long as I shade this a little bit. Oh, God damn it. This is all off grid. Hold on. T3, doesn't matter. This isn't going to get touched by the player. Uh, we can just put some glow at the top and bottom just to kind of obscure that a little bit and make it blend in a bit more. That's cool. And then I can probably use it above these objects on T2 as like a foreground object. Now, there's going to have to be a bit of tampering here. We're going to have to put some black blocks behind these to give them some clarity against the objects that they're on top of. I'm going to scale up both of these things, link them together, 
uh, and we could probably just do something like that. I don't know. There might need to be some glow around it so it fits in. Maybe some black glow would do. Cool. All right. That doesn't look too bad. I especially like it on that pulse, although the saws look weird. I need to add another foreground element to those saws, I think. Let's take a look at this. This design only gets introduced pretty late into the level, but I think it's fine the way it is. So there is a black outline and a colored outline on the inside, which is going to flash now, the thing is, I've made these pulsing objects on the exact same layer as the saw. So I'm going to use something called Select Filter, which I've got checked in the menu right here. I'm going to have a custom delete. I'm going to swipe all of that so it selects just like that. Give it a different editor layer so we can select it differently. On B1, I'm probably going to copy around that little circle that's on the inside of the saws and just use it for some pulsing decoration here and there. I'm going to select these and I'm going to make black blending a thing in this level as well. They still have the groups to pulse, so it's not like they're disappearing entirely. I just don't want them to be visible the whole time, because while it was a cool idea to fill that space a little bit, I don't know. I think it makes it a bit more flashy if they're not visible the whole time, and then they go super bright all of a sudden. Hello. I haven't done much. I haven't either, but I don't think I destroyed it necessarily this time. Yay! Like that's I don't a good think I'm, I don't think you're gonna have to fix what I did. But I really only added like one thing because I was I spent all my other time trying to get something to work that didn't end up working. Oh, so I noticed you added like a little underlay design and you extended yeah, the outline, the thick outline. That's smart. I didn't do anything else. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Go Happy New good Year! <laughs> Okay. So we put some low opacity black glow around the speed changer, but this is multifunctional. We can put some light background glow on the tops of these blocks. Maybe even black blending. Hold on. Let me add one of these pulsing groups, maybe six or something. Set this to black blending. So it kind of pulses like that. Like what? Like that. Okay. So yes, the idea is to make a lot of decoration that can be used in different ways. That looks really ugly. Hold on, let me set this object to B4 so it goes behind all that glow. Okay, it does not look good when there's a square overlapping that, obviously, because the blending just goes crazy. Everywhere else, it looks fine. So we just get rid of the object with the square, which is right over here. We found another purpose for this, which is a laser-style pulse that's going under the blue pads here and there. So I've skipped a couple groups. It goes from three to five so it's not as rapid fire as these because they're spread out and it wouldn't look very good if it just happened instantly we can add a different group for this portal up here which isn't in that pattern so there's like a four-way laser going on there that's cool we can even add some glow around this orb that's using group four or something something that's not included in anything else but we should really add some darkness and i have no idea how so i'm adding some little spike boxes next to these objects you can see them here and I'm looking to add a chain to them that stays black. Might need to whip out that low opacity nine. That is going to work. I'm glad I found that. I can probably add little details of that color to these objects in some way. Maybe by scaling them down and cramming them into the corners like that. Yeah, that's subtle. Okay, now I've noticed while I've been putting in these objects that this level has no saws. And I've just thought of the genius way to add them. So I'm gonna put invisible black saws so that's gonna introduce a little bit more darkness into the level and above them i can add one of those crazy pulsing objects or something i don't know maybe just a circle that copies juni's color channel three. Oh, hold on i've just thought of something smart okay so when the objects change away from the black outline we can pulse juni's color channel three to black to keep that black looking fresh. This is a miracle. Lots of the invisible saws. Okay, there we go. This is looking much more filled up now. I like this a lot. There's not so much brightness anymore. I think I'm doing well right now. I don't know. If you don't think so, be sure to let me know why in the comments because I'm always looking for feedback to improve. I wanna see what people like, what they don't like. And I feel like in level swaps, random stuff happens and I never get to find out if people like it or not. I think the colors might be a little bit whack on Don't Crush. You- I'm pretty sure that I did absolutely nothing other than place like four blocks. It's Because fine. I would try and do something and then it just didn't happen. So you're basically getting the same thing that you sent me. <laughs> Wait, I see. There's a structure at the top there. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> oh, and, and the little orb things. Okay. And the orb things. That's I vibe, those are the orb I vibe things. with it. Yeah, this is the last one. So you gotta- okay. 
You gotta sweep it up, I guess. The I Last am. Melon. The it's an Ice Age reference. I haven't watched Ice Age, I'm sorry. You I'm know sorry. what? I'm deleting this level. My face is not. Hey! <laughs> Good luck, Wolsey. Three, the Wolsey. Mr. Wolsey. Two. One. Good luck. Journey. Why did you use the default object? Why did you use the default ones? Everything else is... Oh, man. I could have had this, like, cool fading effect. Or I could have changed it to, like... Wait, I'll show you on yellow. I could have changed the color of it, and it would have... That looks kind of insane, actually. Do I remake Junie's thing? I don't know if it's worth it. You know what? I'm gonna do it. Let's you. Oh my god! I think that's the second time I've ever sneezed on a recording. The idea was that it was gonna be a subtle change, but I changed it to yellow for a demonstration, and it kind of went crazy. So I'm keeping it. Uh, I think this is all good. Okay, the glow around the orbs goes yellow as well. I don't think the yellow is it. <laughs> I was gonna be crazy and keep it, but I think it's a bit too nuts. I'm gonna just change it to one of those like murky-looking greens. Then we. We can pulse this color channel one to the background color. Okay, that's neat. So similarly to what we did earlier, I'm gonna be adding a massive gradient. I have not pasted the values properly. Give me one second. That is gonna cover the whole level. It's gonna start off in this position, get moved on the X axis all the way to the right. Because if I placed it just here, then the level would extend all the way out here. So group nine, don't fade, don't enter. At the very top, as you can see, is going to get moved to the right somewhere random in the level where you can't see it. It's gonna move 250 on the X, which is 25 blocks to the right. Then as you go in this portal, there's gonna be a move trigger for that group nine. That's gonna move it backwards 250, back the way it came in two sec, maybe 1.5 seconds. However long it takes to reach the end of this platform. Please work. Oh, you pop out at the end. Okay, if I hide the player, in fact, I can just copy everything except the glow and put it on another group so it has nine and ten and ten can get this movement again so don't cry what if i just put a trigger right here that changes the background to black in 0.5 seconds this should be fine the game keeps crashing so i'm going there's no way there's no way i literally exited the level before i went to test it I saved and exited it saved and then it crashed loading the level like why there we go, and it goes to black. Okay, cool. And then, this is where I move up the text that says, My face is broken. <laughs> so this needs to be at the very top of T3. I'm gonna make it white to contrast with the black. Okay, so we need to use color channel 5. And I'm gonna copy paste this little slope around to make some text that says, My... My... <laughs> the genius strat right here is to copy the F and then take the other side of it and copy paste it right there. Fa face is a very copy pasteable word, okay? It is copy paste, even more copy paste, broken. There we go. Now let me just align the text a little bit. This is so bad. I'm gonna select Ken. So it says my face is bro. Ken is 11 and then bro is 12. So Ken's gonna fade off and bro's gonna move into that space. So my face is bro. Let me set that up now. 10 seconds to fade off for 11. And then 12 is gonna swoop in. Two blocks to the right. Maybe five down, like half a block down. Put that on group 13. So it has one group to call itself. This needs to go underneath the level on a new editor layer. And then we shall move it towards the end. This is going to be a nightmare to like align and it's going to move upwards about 70. Imagine if I get this right first try. First attempt at getting it right. Oh, it's not far off. We're going to make it back out. We're extending the move time on it. And then I've moved this closer to the end. 120. Don't crash. It's crashed. <laughs> yes. Okay. And then the bro. No, it's not far enough up. Okay. If I change that to like 85 on the 20 minute mark, that one session, my game crashed about six times. Oh no, mine just- It just crashed again. I don't- Oh, seven. I'm really <laughs> okay. worried. I didn't- I didn't mess with anything other than the end. Oh. Okay, we're going in. Don't you dare crash. Oh my- Oh. Wait, you took blending off. I took blending okay, off nice. on accident. I didn't oh. realize Can that I put it, it would affect the whole level. Can I put it back? Wait, I'll make a legacy <laughs> mode. <laughs> no! The problem is that for the stupid cat at the end, I use like circle blocks or whatever to um, make like the stripes on the on the head. Yeah. And so oh, they like good. came through the cat. You did well. So like what I did was like I used like other blocks to like cover it up and then I made them black and then I took blending off. So apparently <laughs> I used a panel that was used on everything else. <laughs> there we go. There's a toggle at the beginning that fixes it. <laughs>
<laughs> but if you don't hit the toggle, then it's just. <laughs> I was like playing it through. I was like, why does this look a little bit different? A little I bit. Tired. <laughs> Oh, this is why I'm You got the victim. Wait, everything your I did. eyes disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I... The legacy mode made your eyes disappear. Okay, the I need to fix mode that. Makes my eyes because your eyes also use 10, right? Now everyone knows why I've never made a level other than like Fish for Life when I was in like sixth grade. No, but this is like awesome. It's just not. Don't even try and make me feel it's better by saying a, Fish for Life is it's awesome. It's such a shame that I'm not signed in as Wolsey, so I can't send this right now. Do you I'm have any last words? No, I'm traumatized. Okay. Yep. Fair enough. This is a meme episode, so there'll Obviously. be another one next week. Thank you for watching this level swap. Subscribe to Juni. Don't subscribe to Juniper Clips because I'm terrified of that channel overtaking mine. That channel's um, died. Anyway, goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. Yay!